Hello, this is Miss Christine again from the Ceramic Garden in Tampa. And as promised, I'm continuing to create my little videos, as unprofessional as they are. I am continuing to create videos to show you how to make certain projects with clay um, that you might have at home or that you might have purchased over here from the Ceramic Garden. So today we're going to make a cereal bowl. Um, I use these hump mold in the studio here. They're made out of plaster and the clay doesn't stick to it. You can probably uh, try to use a plastic bowl and wrap the clay on top of the plastic bowl. However, you want to wrap it in plastic before you do that. Otherwise, it'll be, it'll, the, the clay will stick to the plastic and you'll have to break your bowl off. So these, I am selling them online. You can order them at um, theceramicgarden.com in the shop section. And you can watch uh, the how-to series videos that I'm making. Uh, so you can, you can do whatever projects you want. I'm going to change the direction of my camera here so you can see what I'm doing. Here I have a piece of white earthenware clay that I have cut from... Uh, a block of clay with my um, my clay wire so you might not have these expensive clay tool at home so that's okay you can use a piece of yarn a piece of thread and you can cut from the block of clay anyway I've already done that here and I am flattening my clay a little bit with a rolling pin or tapping it so it's a little flatter and I'm using, here I use these rulers. Uh, they're actually like paint slabs that I put on each side. And the reason why I'm doing that is I don't want my clay to be too thin so my cereal bowl doesn't break. So here I have a rolling pin and I'm creating my own slab. In other words, I am rolling it out. You want to see the clay expand. And once your rolling pin touches the rulers on the side, that means you have achieved the thickness um, that you want. And here it's about a quarter, a quarter inch thick. I don't know if you can see here. That'll be how thick it'll be. So this way, it'll it won't be like too thin that you know it'll break. So I'm just continuing to roll out here my clay. And I'm flipping it over from time to time. Oops, an air bubble. If you see air bubble, you just poke them. Because that could make your piece explode in the kiln. So I'm going to go like this. Here I'm outside my rulers. But I'm just going to be careful not to roll it too thin. Okay, so I do that basically until I have enough clay to wrap on top of my hump mold. So now I have this like pancake looking type of clay. I'm going to put it on top of my mold and I'm going to make sure that I don't see any white underneath over here. So here I'm good. I'm going to wet my fingers. Remember, I always have a little bit of water at hand and I'm going to use my hands my thumb my pinkies the side of my hands to mold this cereal bowl really really good all the way around if you create creases or anything it's not a big deal it will not affect the end product the finished product at all so if you feel that it's like that they are like little cracks or it's starting to crack a little bit, that's okay. You can just wet your finger and just smooth out the clay. And there's something very satisfying about touching the clay and putting water on your hand and just playing with mud if you want, you know, playing with that clay. So once I'm done with forming my bowl, I am going to use my index fingers and make a line around 
just so it's really like marked really well because we're gonna cut this area okay here we go now it's nice and smooth there's no bumps if you feel any ridges or any bumps you can just go back and forth with your hands until you're satisfied with the way your bowl looks okay now we're going to cut it i have my needle tool here you can probably use a pencil or any kind of like maybe the tip of a brush or any or even a, a knife, you know, if you if you have like a knife that you can use for uh, for arts and craft, you can use that. I am going to cut all the way around, place my needle tool right here until I feel the mold underneath. And I'm going to cut from top to bottom. So top to bottom meaning, you know, this is the top, this is the bottom. So now if I want to do top to bottom, I have to use my left hand. I'm ambidextrous, so I can use my left hand as well. So you can do that. Otherwise, you'd have to move your position, you know, and go like this on the side and go from left to right so you don't create any ridges. If I don't cut from top to bottom, I'm going to start creating a little zigzag because my tool will not be able to slide smoothly from the top to the bottom. Now I'm creating a little ridge here and I'm taking the clay off around my mold. And you can always do something with that clay. You can do add-ons. In one of my previous video um, that I just did before, I showed you how to make little monster and add on those little balls, uh, eyeballs. You can actually uh, create decorations. Just make sure that you score whatever you add on really, really good. Anyways, to move on with this, I'm actually um, smoothing out the bottom where I cut. Because if you don't smooth out the bottom real good, once it's dry and I take the, uh, the ball out of the hump mold, and it dries and I fire it, the little pieces of clay sticking up, if it's not real smooth, they can actually cut you. You can you can cut you can get cut really bad with ceramics. Okay, so here we go. It's all smooth. When I lift it up, but you don't want to lift it up, this is how it looks like right here. And then later on I will actually use a special tool and go around to pull the hump mold out and then I will let it smooth out the sides clean it up with a little sponge or what um, or you know or your fingers and then I will let it dry for at least seven days it depends on the thickness but I want to let it dry at least seven days and then you can bring it back to the ceramic garden to get it fired anyway now what do I do with this mold I can actually do a lot of different things here because I can do texture on it. I can leave it smooth like this and just write my name in the year when I did it. Or if you have stamps, I can actually uh, do some stamps. So here I have like a strip of stamp that I have in the studio. I have these in the studio that uh, the kids can use. I can actually do, uh, let me see, if I do it like this, I need to work upside down. Remember, if you work like this, your ball is upside down. So if you want to write your name, you want to write your name sort of upside down, or you want to, you can also like maybe flip it like this and write your name over here. So, you know, so it looks right side up. Here, my little fish, I am going to actually apply the stamp here. And I'm going to push with my thumbs and massage it with my fingers really good. And I'm going to press a little bit. And I'm going to make fishes all the way around. I've decided my design is going to be fishes all the way around. Okay, and then I'm going to peel it off really gentle, gentle, gentle. Always peel it off super gentle. And here we go. I have a frieze of fishes like this, upside down, right side up, 
this is the way it's going to look. I don't know if you can see here. Okay, so I'm going to do that all the way around. Upside down. And it's basically a bunch of fishes that are swimming around. So it doesn't really matter if you have, you know, a fish on top of the other because... You know, if you overlap it a little bit, because it'll actually look even more organic and more natural looking. So this is the second part. I think I have to do a third one. So it bridges, you know. I'm pressing with my fingers, massaging, pressing down. This is a pretty flexible stamp. So whatever you do, it'll, it'll mark like pretty good. And these you can find on probably Amazon or, or on the internet. I have a few of them. Now here at the bottom, I want to apply a stamp. And I have a tower of stamp here. I am going to choose, what am I going to choose? I'm going to choose a heart. So I have a stamp heart here. I'm putting it at the bottom and I'm pressing real good everywhere with my knuckle, with the heel of my hand. That's the heel of your hand here. I'm pressing really, really firmly and then I peel it off. Ta-da! I now have a beautiful heart at the bottom of my ball. I am going to use special tools that have a little ball at the end to write my name, my initial are cat, just like a cat, meow, C-A-T, which stands for Christine Alice Terranova. And I'm also going to write the, the year, actually. I'm going to write 2020. Here we go. And I have my beautiful little ball. So now it needs to dry. It'll probably need to dry for a couple of hours before I can take it out. And then I will let it dry for at least seven days. It'll get fired in a big oven that's called a kiln at 1,940 degrees. And then after that, I can paint it, I can clear glaze it, and I can fire it again. So I hope this was helpful and I hope you can Make your own cereal bowl or a pinch pot by hand. Remember, always wedge your clay before you start on a project. Like the song goes, let it go, let it go. Okay, this is Miss Christine from the Ceramic Garden. Bye-bye till the next videos. Go to the Ceramic Garden's website in the shop section. At the bottom, there's... Uh, category that's called how to series and that's where all the videos on how to work with clay are thank you bye bye